Picture this. A man, fatally struck by an arrow through his shoulder, desperately attempting to flee across the treacherous slopes of the Alps. His heart pounds, every breath labored, as he clutches his wound, blood flowing fast, his life slipping away. This was Utzi, the Iceman, preserved for over 5,000 years in glacial ice until its chilling discovery. Recent forensic breakthroughs reshape our understanding. The arrow didn't just wound him, it ruptured a vital artery, sealing his fate through rapid blood loss and agony. But the story doesn't end there. His final meals, unearthed through DNA, tell of hunted ibex and deer. His body harbored ancient parasites, H. pylori, and even Lyme disease, illnesses that would torment him in his final hours. Today, we follow the vivid trail of his last journey, moment by moment, piecing together the grueling reality of Utzi's final, frozen moments in time. In September of 1991, two German hikers, Helmut and Erika Simon, were making their way through the Utztal Alps on the border between Austria and Italy. At an elevation of more than 3,200 meters, they stumbled across what appeared at first to be the body of a mountaineer. The corpse lay face down, its torso and head emerging from the melting ice. Believing it to be the remains of a modern climber who had perished only decades earlier, they alerted local authorities. Rescue teams arrived soon after, but the extraction process was anything but careful. With little expectation of scientific value, workers hacked at the surrounding ice with pickaxes, even damaging the mummy's hip in the process. Only later did researchers realize that this was not a modern mountaineer at all, but a natural mummy preserved in the glacier for over five millennia. The discovery of what came to be known as Utzi the Iceman quickly captured international attention. Here was a human body older than the pyramids of Giza, preserved with skin, clothing, and even organs intact. Early examinations revealed remarkable details of his Copper Age existence. His bearskin cap, goatskin leggings, grass cloak, and sophisticated toolkit, including a copper axe and flint dagger, provided a window into a long-vanished world. But as fascinating as these artifacts were, the central mystery surrounded his death. How did this man, around 45 years old, end up frozen high in the Alps. Initial theories painted his end as a natural tragedy. Some researchers believed he had been caught in a sudden alpine storm, succumbing to cold and exhaustion. Others speculated he had fallen or been buried by snow and ice. For more than a decade, the prevailing idea was that Utzi's death was accidental, tragic, but not violent. That view began to change in 2001, when CT scans revealed something startling, an arrowhead lodged deep in his left shoulder. Suddenly, the possibility of foul play emerged. Perhaps Utsi had been hunted down, perhaps even assassinated, yet the details remained murky. Was the arrow wound instantly fatal? Did he collapse immediately, or could he have lingered, bleeding out over hours? These were the questions that would drive decades of forensic investigation, as each new generation of imaging technology peeled back another layer of his story. For many years after the discovery of the arrowhead in Utzi's shoulder, the cause of his death was still debated. The arrow was embedded deeply, but the extent of its damage was unclear. Some researchers argued that the projectile may have struck muscle or bone without being immediately fatal. Others suggested he could have survived the initial wound long enough to die from exposure or exhaustion instead. For decades, his death remained a mixture of mystery and speculation, a narrative of possibly violent but uncertain circumstances. This uncertainty changed dramatically with the application of high-resolution CT scans and advanced imaging techniques. In recent years, teams of forensic scientists were able to visualize Utsi's internal anatomy with unprecedented clarity. What they found was decisive. The arrow had torn through his subclavian artery, a major blood vessel located just beneath the collarbone. Injury to this artery is catastrophic. In modern medical settings, even with rapid surgical intervention, survival is rare. In the remote highlands of the Copper Age, it would have been hopeless. The new imaging showed that Utzi's death was not drawn out over many hours. Instead, he would have bled out within minutes, likely less than half an hour after being struck. The implications of this finding were significant. First, it overturned earlier notions of a slow death from exposure. Utzi's demise was not the result of bad weather or misfortune, it was a targeted killing. Second, it revealed that his final moments were marked by panic and helplessness. A strike to the subclavian artery would have caused rapid blood loss, sudden weakness, and collapse. 
he likely lost consciousness quickly. This was no accidental passing. It was a violent end inflicted by another human being. Further forensic detail supports this interpretation. The arrow's angle of entry suggests that the shot was fired from behind and slightly to the left, hitting him as he either fled or was caught off guard. Some researchers propose that he may have been ambushed during his alpine crossing, his attacker standing at an elevated position or hidden vantage point. The broken shaft, left protruding from the wound, indicates that there was no attempt to retrieve the weapon, a sign that the killer either had no need to recover it or was interrupted. There is also evidence of additional trauma. Examinations of Utzi's skull revealed minor cranial injuries consistent with a fall or perhaps a final blow after he collapsed. His right hand carried a deep defensive wound, suggesting he had been in some form of struggle prior to his death. These details point toward a confrontation rather than an accident. Utzi was not simply wandering through the Alps when fate struck him down. He was pursued and fatally wounded. Together, these forensic breakthroughs reshaped the narrative. The Iceman's death was neither a peaceful passing in sleep nor a slow fading from hunger and cold. Instead, he was hunted, shot, and left to die high in the mountains. His body, sealed by the ice, would remain there for over 5,000 years, preserving not only the physical evidence of his killing, but also a silent testimony to human conflict in the Copper Age. While the arrow wound explains how Utsi died, the remarkable preservation of his body has revealed an extraordinary amount about how he lived and the burdens he carried during his final years. His stomach, intestines, teeth, and even blood vessels survived the passage of more than five millennia, providing scientists with an unprecedented opportunity to study the health of a single Copper Age individual in microscopic detail. What they discovered paints a picture of a man whose life was far from easy. One of the most striking insights came from the examination of his digestive tract. For years, researchers were puzzled by the difficulty in locating Otzi's stomach, which had shifted upwards after death due to the mummification process. Once it was identified, scientists were able to analyze the preserved contents with both microscopic and genetic techniques. The findings revealed his last meal, chunks of ibex and red deer meat, grains likely from einkorn wheat, and traces of charcoal. The presence of charcoal suggested that his food had been cooked over an open fire, and the fatty tissues from ibex meat indicated he consumed a high-energy diet suitable for long treks in cold, alpine conditions. That meal appears to have been eaten just hours before his death, meaning he likely embarked on his final journey with a full stomach. But beyond diet, the condition of his body showed that Utzi lived with numerous health problems. DNA analysis revealed infection with Helicobacter pylori, the bacterium responsible for stomach ulcers and chronic gastritis. If the strain he carried was virulent, it could have caused him severe abdominal pain during his life. In addition, his intestines carried the eggs of whipworm parasites, a common burden in pre-modern populations, which would have contributed to digestive distress and malnutrition. Even more striking, tissue studies identified traces of Borrelia burgdorferi, the bacterium responsible for Lyme disease. This makes Utzi the oldest known human case of Lyme infection, suggesting that tick-borne diseases have afflicted humans for thousands of years. His skeletal remains added further evidence of chronic suffering. CT scans of his joints showed signs of arthritis, particularly in his knees, hips, and lower back conditions that would have caused pain and limited mobility. His teeth were worn down with cavities and gum disease, likely caused by a carbohydrate-rich diet combined with poor oral hygiene. He also showed signs of hardened arteries, indicating cardiovascular disease. Remarkable for someone who lived in a world without modern processed foods, but consistent with the heavy physical demands of his lifestyle and possibly genetic predisposition. All of these findings suggest that Utzi, though still relatively young by modern standards at about 45 years old, was already living with the cumulative toll of age, environment, and disease. He was no idealized warrior striding through the Alps in peak condition. Rather, he was a man shaped by hardship, carrying infections, joint pain, and perhaps recurring stomach ailments. When combined with the evidence of violent conflict, the image that emerges is of a man both physically vulnerable and caught up in the dangers of his time. His preserved body offers a rare glimpse into the reality of life in the Copper Age, a world where disease, parasites, and chronic pain were everyday companions. In this way, 
Otsi serves not only as a forensic case study, but also as a human reminder of the struggles that defined prehistoric existence. If Otsi's body tells us about his health and diet, the traces preserved within him reveal a remarkable story about his movements in the days before his death. Scientists have been able to reconstruct his final journey almost step by step, not through speculation, but through pollen grains, plant fragments, and microscopic evidence embedded in his digestive system. These botanical and geological clues act like a travel log, documenting his passage through different environments in the Alps. The last hours of his life appear to have been highly mobile. Pollen from a species of hop hornbeam tree found in his stomach contents indicated that only about 12 hours before he died, Utsi was at a much lower altitude, likely in a valley region where such trees grew. Soon afterward, however, his intestines captured the presence of alpine meadow plants, showing that he climbed rapidly into higher elevations. This pattern suggests he made a significant ascent within a short period, an urgent journey rather than a leisurely climb. Additional evidence comes from the charcoal traces found in his stomach alongside his last meal. These indicate he had access to a fire, likely in a sheltered environment at lower altitude, before pushing upward into harsher terrain. His decision to climb may have been driven by necessity, fleeing enemies, seeking safety, or traveling toward a specific destination. The sudden change in altitude combined with the presence of cooked food strongly suggests that Utsi was not simply wandering. He was moving with purpose in the hours before his death. His equipment adds further weight to this reconstruction. He carried a full kit, a copper axe, flint knife, arrows, some unfinished, and a quiver. He also had a grass cloak, leather clothing, and shoes stuffed with grass for insulation. This was not the gear of a man on a casual trip into the mountains. It was the equipment of someone prepared for survival. Yet some details hint at haste. Several of his arrows were incomplete, and his bow was unfinished. It is possible that he had been interrupted in the middle of repairing or preparing his weapons, perhaps forced to abandon his settlement quickly. Physical trauma also aligns with this interpretation. The deep cut on his right hand, interpreted as a defensive wound, likely occurred a day or two before his death. This suggests he had already been involved in a violent encounter, possibly with the same people who later delivered the fatal arrow. Taken together, the injuries, incomplete weapons, and rapid ascent point to a man under threat, moving through the landscape with urgency in an attempt to evade danger. When he finally stopped, it was high in the Tizanyak Pass a remote area over 3,000 meters above sea level. There, he ate his final meal, carrying the calories necessary for the alpine cold before being struck down by the arrow that ended his life. The combination of pollen analysis, stomach contents, and forensics creates one of the most detailed narratives of any prehistoric individual's last days. Few figures from the distant past can be traced with such precision, their final steps literally mapped in microscopic fragments of plants and food preserved for thousands of years. Otzi's last journey, then, was not a slow wandering into death by exposure, but a desperate movement through valleys and mountains, culminating in an ambush high in the Alps. His preserved body allows us to trace not just where he died, but how he reached that point, and why his final hours were shaped by both flight and violence. When Otzi's body was first lifted from the ice in 1991, no one could have imagined just how transformative his discovery would be for archaeology, anthropology, and even medicine. At first, he was treated as a curiosity, a remarkably preserved prehistoric man, complete with clothing and tools. But over the past three decades, he has become far more than a frozen relic. Utsi has become one of the most studied human remains in history, a reference point for what modern science can reveal about the deep past. The importance of Utsi lies not only in his extraordinary preservation, but also in the sheer variety of technologies applied to him. Each new decade has brought methods that earlier researchers could not have dreamed of. Initial X-rays gave way to CT scans, allowing forensic specialists to look inside his body without causing damage. DNA sequencing provided insights into his ancestry, health conditions, and even the bacteria that lived inside him. Stable isotope analysis traced his diet and movements across the landscape. Proteomics and microbiome research have opened entirely new windows onto the microscopic world he carried within him. With each advance, the story of Utsi has shifted, refined, and deepened. 
These studies have also reshaped our picture of Copper Age Europe. From Utsi, we know that people of his time practiced sophisticated hunting and food preparation, carrying meals that balanced protein and fat for endurance in the mountains. His copper axe, rare for its era, showed that metallurgy was spreading across Europe earlier and more widely than once assumed. His tattoos, over 60 of them, located on joints and pressure points, may represent an early form of therapeutic treatment, akin to acupuncture. His clothing, carefully constructed from different animal hides and grasses, demonstrated a detailed knowledge of materials and the environment. But the most human element of his legacy comes from his death. For years, archaeology painted prehistory as harsh but relatively simple, a world of subsistence, cooperation, and survival. Otzi's violent end tells us that conflict, ambush, and interpersonal violence were also realities of the Copper Age. He was not a mythic figure from an age of peace, but a man whose final act was shaped by rivalry, danger, and pursuit. His preserved body collapses the distance of time, reminding us that fear, violence, and mortality are as old as humanity itself. Finally, Otzi serves as a time capsule not only for archaeologists, but also for medicine. His parasites, pathogens, and genetic markers reveal the continuity of human disease across millennia. Stomach ulcers, Lyme disease, arthritis, and cardiovascular problems, all conditions that afflict modern populations, were already present in his world. His remains allow scientists to trace the evolution of diseases that continue to shape human lives today. More than 30 years after his discovery, Otzi remains one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century. He bridges science and humanity, reminding us that behind the layers of data and analysis is a person, a man who lived, ate, suffered, and died in the High Alps over 5,000 years ago. His frozen body has become a voice from prehistory, not in words, but in evidence, telling us about survival, technology, health, violence, and the resilience of human life in the face of adversity.